Well, good afternoon. I hope everybody's enjoying this wonderful lunch. But while we're eating, uh, we have a bit of a treat. Uh, we're going to be, uh, here's some lovely uh, flute music. Um, Dr. Yella Atima is a professor of biology and a research fellow in the Department of Cognitive and Neural Systems at, at BU. Has a lifelong interest in, in the flute and will play several pieces for us uh, during lunch. So, Dr. Atima. Before I will actually play music, I would like to establish my bona fides that uh, we all are a part of Lynn's extended family, intellectually, emotionally. Uh, we all are her close friends. And it's amazing how all of us apparently represent those close friends individually, and yet in the aggregate, here we are. Most of you I don't know, but all of us know Lynn. Um, our, Origins of life, of course, was Lynn's life. And all of us are interested in origins in general. I make that a little closer. I don't go by millions of years, but by thousands of years. And so I've been interested in what is it that makes us human? Eventually, out of this tree of bacteria, uh, we get humans. And these humans have evolved, presumably somewhere in the neighborhood of 200,000 years. But is that really evidence for being human? So you have to define this as a scientist. And so as a flutist, I define it, of course, very simply, as the time that we started playing music, and specifically, the hard evidence that I will present is flutes. So the oldest flute I will play for you is a reconstruction of a cave bear bone that was found in a Neanderthal deposit in Slovenia and it is dated very accurately to 53,000 years ago. I will also play a much more recent instrument, only 35,000 years old, <laughs> which I reconstructed from a deer bone and is a more, for, uh, slightly more advanced version of the same kind of a flute. In a nutshell, it is a small recorder, a fipple flute. So let me start with the ancient It is actually a bone that is itself also maybe as much as 100,000 years old. It is a fossilized bone from uh, Vienna. And based on the rather broken remnants that were found in Slovenia, I reconstructed it based on the other flute where it's more clear that it is actually a fipple flute, i.e. a recorder. So this is what the um, Neanderthal Cave bear bone flute is sounding like. Uh, I have to warn you that there is a um, raging controversy in the literature whether this is really a flute, whether it is Neanderthal, etc., etc. Uh, we're familiar with these kinds of things. So, so, Neanderthals have, in my opinion, always been very much underrated. And the little piece of evidence I will add to that is that in the same deposits, in most Neanderthal deposits, you find very simple utilitarian tools like scrapers and spear points. They didn't have a bow and arrow. They didn't have sophisticated fishing hooks that came up with Cro-Magnon but they made a flute. Therefore, i.e., I conclude that they were interested in music because they could be singing and dancing, fine. They could use clapsticks and all these kinds of th things you see in all sorts of tribes still the world over. 
But if they take the effort to make a fipple flute, which is difficult to, co to conceive of, to even think about how to make a fipple flute, once you know it, it's easy. But if you don't know it, how do you go there? If they devoted that type of intellectual effort to make an instrument that can only be a musical instrument because it's no reason to make something so sophisticated if you want to make bird calls or something like that. Therefore, the Neanderthals have risen enormously in my estimation, and I think they should definitely be included in a group of humans that, uh, by my definition, are musical. So I'll also play its successor from France, found in the Dordogne area. It's in the British Museum, and it's pretty uh, accurate in terms of what was left of it. So that allowed me to go to the hypothesis that this is actually a recorder. The problem I have to identify in the discussion of my little paper here, if, uh, as an honest scientist, is that you might now think that Cro-Magnon in the Dordogne area 30,000 years ago played this kind of music. Uh, I must disappoint you that I was trained as a classical Western musician, and so I play classical Western music in tune. That is the hook. We don't know what in tune means for Cro-Magnon or for Neanderthal. So the sound is there. We don't know what they did with the sound. It is a complex instrument, so we know that they made complex music. What that music was, unfortunately, I cannot tell you. So after this little prelude, I would like to now uh, play something on the subsequent developments of what happened later, although this is not a recorder. Uh, so I will step away and play three different pieces for you, each very short flute solo pieces. And the first piece is a Fantasia by Kulau, uh, who uh, composed this music in the early 19th century. And to me, it embodies Lin as being audacious, passionate, and wild.
The second piece is the famous Orfeo area of uh, Gluck, which to me in this context refers to love lost, despair, and resignation. Finally, balance, understanding, and humility, which I will find in Bach, the Sarabande of the flute solo sonata. <coughs> 